So here, uh, everyone who has uh, a AWS account and uh, it open, you can follow along. Uh, this session is going to be pretty much all in the console. Uh, and if you uh, want to like set up an account and you haven't already, uh, our previous learning sessions are on the website. Uh, it, there we have information on how you can like, kind of get set up and everything. So lambda functions, when we type in lambda, this is their little thing about it. You run code without thinking about servers. That's kind of the whole point of it. Let's save their little example. Uh, let's create a function. So one thing that's really fun to do is look at their AWS serverless repository. And uh, what this, what they have here, is a lot of kind of cool projects they've done, that they'll kind of just show you the code for how they did it. If you want to like get started in any area, uh, I recommend you kind of look here. So for example, last session we did a lot with S3. We look here. They have four pages of just uh, the things that rely heavily on Lambda with S3. Some of it like uh, takes files you upload to S3 and then uh, uncompresses them. Uh, let's see, what else do they have here? Automatically encrypt any file uploaded to S3 for security. Static site, that's what, uh, that's what we'll be doing for this and that's what our UMN Cloud website is on. It's a static site. Yeah, and just convert audio files to MP3, automatically st uh, stabilize any video you put in there. Just a lot of cool things. Uh, we're going to make something dead simple, though. Uh, for a function name, I'm going to name this uh, test learning lambda. And I'm going to do Python, uh, just a personal thing. I think uh, the last time I checked, the one that has the fastest uptime is Go. And the slowest, I think it was either Java or C Sharp, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I just recommend uh, probably not doing Java for a Lambda function. Uh, since it takes so long to start Java up. And these are supposed to be like pithy, quick little things. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll uh, we'll make a role that can't do anything. So useless lambda role. This just means it doesn't have access to other uh, AWS resources because we're not giving it access to anything else. I'll create the function. So you can see here this is the Lambda function itself. These are the list of triggers. Uh, we won't have any uh, right now. Uh, maybe we'll add one at the end, uh, uh, later on in this. Uh, and then these are the resources it has. What CloudWatch logs do is they give you information of what the Lambda function is doing. So whenever you have like a print statement or like a return or anything like that, you can see that show up in the logs. You can see when the execution started and all that. Uh, you have to, when you do it uh, programmatically, you have to explicitly give it uh, permission for logs. Through the console, they automatically do that because uh, there isn't really any reason you wouldn't do logs. So, and these are some of the triggers. Uh, an API, IoT, Alexa, 
other CloudWatch stuff, S3, um, stuff like that. So this is uh, their supplied example. Uh, we're just going to use this one initially. So uh, to test it, uh, we will create a test event. So uh, the event name, let's name it first events. And key one, value one, we can just keep this the same. So we now have created our test event. If we have multiple ones, we can uh, select which test event we want to do for certain scenarios. But we can test this code right here. And then see the execution results. Uh, this is the output. This is all the information. And we can actually see the logs, the CloudWatch logs, right here. CloudWatch logs can be extremely painful to work with. Uh, but uh, for like this application, uh, it's fun. OK, so now we have a Lambda function. Let's go about uh, actually invoking it. So if I go, I'm going to just hide this. So if we go here to the terminal, and we do AWS. Now AWS, uh, the command line, at least the one I have, AWS CLI, is through Python. Uh, I showed it in the last one, but I can show it again. Uh, just pip, uh, pip install AWS CLI. And then with that, you'll have the command line utility. But if we want to do AWS Lambda invoke uh, to invoke the function, we have to give it the function name, which in this case is test learning Lambda. Uh, and then I'll pick my profile to be human cloud. I'll specify the region as US East 1. US East 1 being right here, North Virginia. And I have to select an out file. So I'll name it out.json. And we get the status code and then what you can do with Lambda functions, which is pretty cool, is you can version them. Uh, so you can execute on, like previous versions of the Lambda. Uh, it's really good if you're going to like change your code base. You can create a new version, uh, but still have everything point to the old version until your migration is complete, and then kind of move things over after that. But uh, what that did was, you can see I'm in my desktop create the file out.json, open it up, and it has the result, uh, the status code, and then the body. So pretty simple. Uh, and then if we look at the logs, we'll be able to see the execution we just did uh, from the command line. Extreme, and then here it was. And its time is in UTC, so you have to, because we're in central time, you have to subtract five hours for uh, the time we have here. So now for the next part, uh, let's use a bit of the payload. So how the Lambda function works is it has this event and this context. The event is everything you give the Lambda function. The event is the payload. The context is a special type that they have. Their context includes the function name, uh, how much time is left 
uh, for the lamp to function to run before it automatically shuts it off. Uh, it's a pretty interesting beast. Uh, a lot of your applications probably won't use it, but the ones who have to do a lot of processing and may get close to that limit uh, we'll have to be aware of the context. But what we're going to do is let's do json.dumps events.get uh, and let's pick a name uh, rando so uh, just if you're not too familiar with Python, uh, this will, because the event is a dictionary, it'll say if we have, if there's name in the events, we'll, we'll supply the name. If not, I'll just throw the word rando. So name plus was here. Okay, and then after we've done that, this button is now orange. Uh, this will allow us to save the code we have. So I'll save this. Alright. So what do you think will happen if I run the test event again? Anyone? Wild guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's give her a go. Yeah, Rando is here. So let's create a new test event. So figure test event. Uh, we'll create a new one. Uh, we won't edit the first one. It'll, we can use the first as a template. But I'll name this second test event. And make this name. Uh, someone throw it a name. Anyone, just yell something. Jeff. Jeff. All right, so let's create and let's test. So there we go. Jeff was here. So now what we can do is we can uh, supply uh, a payload, the event, and we can customize what the event, the lambda function does, based on what we give it. So if we were to run this again. If we were to run it the exact same way, we will get uh, so let's do the whole loading. We'll get Rando was here. But if we supply a payload, so there's the function name. We do payload and then the name will be Jim Bob. And you see how this execution is a lot faster than this one? What Lambda does is it has something called a cold start. So the first time you execute it, it has to like pull it out, put it on a virtual machine, and then go through the process of running it. And so that takes a lot of time. That's called cold start time. But after that, uh, for five minutes after the last execution, it stays on like the virtual machine or whatever they're doing in the, internally. So any further executions are fast. So what some people do is they actually host a website purely out of uh, Lambda. So without S3, without static, it works kind of more like a server. But what they do is they constantly, every like four and a half minutes or so, they send a request to it, just like a no-op request, just to keep it alive, to keep it hot, so that the next time someone accesses the website, they don't have to wait a while for the cold start to run through. Yeah. Wait, so how different is this from uh, caching? From caching? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you don't have access to anything at the machine level with it. So you can store stuff in the temp directory. Uh, that's what you have access to. But if one Lambda function store things in temp directory, you may or may not be able to access it with another Lambda function. You, you don't know. Because they're just constantly shuffling them around. 
So you just know they'll be on a machine, but you don't know what, which machine they'll be on or if it's the same. Uh, so like if you were going to like cache information for like next lambda functions to use, you wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, they actually recommend you use something called DynamoDB, uh, which we'll probably get to later, as like a state. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database, uh, so it's not relational or anything. Uh, they store everything as JSON internally. It's just for you to kind of keep state, uh, specifically for like a Lambda function. So if we look at our uh, output file, we now see Jim Bob was here. So at even here, we were able to pass in the payload. Payload being in JSON format. All right, nice. So let's make a cron for this. Yeah, let's make something kick it off besides us manually. Again, this isn't a super exciting function for what it's doing, but uh, these concepts of kind of what you can do with it will be a lot of what we use with the web app and some other stuff. One thing we were thinking of uh, before this of maybe doing was uh, using Twilio to make a uh, basically a reminder uh, uh, text reminder. Uh, specifically, we're going to do it in the context of this club, just kind of get that set up. Uh, and we might do that uh, later if people are interested. Uh, it would take a lot of uh, setup with like Twilio, and then we'll show. We'd have to show you how to add external Python libraries into uh, the Lambda function. But if people are interested in that, just let us know. Uh, the whole point of this is just to make things, learn things by making things. So let's go to the functions. This is ours. Code size is really small. Uh, and let's add a trigger. All right, so a CloudWatch log is what we're generating here. Uh, so like with this as an example, you could have it watch the logs to see if another application is maybe failing or something and do something off of that. Uh, there's a lot you can do. You can analyze the logs. Uh, but what we're going to do is CloudWatch events. So we're going to create a new rule rule name is uh, every minute description run every minute Neat. so we'll have the rate be one minute at and then what we have to do is we now have to save. Nice. So we're saved. It's enabled. Uh, we're good to go. So if we look here at the monitoring, we can see no errors, uh, four executions. Uh, we can see the duration of each execution. Uh, the, they default to throttling at about 1,000 Lambda functions at the same time. So if you need to use more than that, uh, you have to like resort to other things. Uh, and if you have to use more than that, good job. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, so let's look at CloudWatch logs. And because we released a new version of the uh, Lambda function, there's, they created a new log stream. So we see here, uh, despite the fact that this was our last execution, uh, it's showing one here. And let me actually make it even more clear. Let's have it print something useful to the logs. 
print uh, print my event event save that and let's go look at the logs I don't need to look at the logs multiple times at once. All right, so it'll take about a minute for it to run through. We can just do a test event. Nice output. And then here we have it printed off what the event was. And we can see that in the logs. event. So this was the one that we ran right here. We see because we specified the event to be this. But this right here, this is what the cron kicked off. Uh, gave us the time of the run, uh, region. Right here is the ARN, so the identifier for the cron. Uh, just some other information too. So uh, this way you can kind of kick off your functions to do whatever, uh, which is kind of the point of it is uh, kind of like I said before, uh, event driven. So give them some event and have them do something and then you don't have to worry about setting up the machine or turning it off or anything like that. It just does it. Uh, yeah, so does anyone have any questions about Lambda functions or what you can kind of do with them? Yeah, what we will probably use them in the web app for uh, most often is because they have something called API Gateway for defining APIs. Uh, we, we will have behind that a Lambda function. So the API gateway works will work just as a gateway, making sure that the anything that reaches the lambda is authorized uh, of the correct type, correct values, stuff like that. And then it'll reach the lambda function that will run something and return something back through the API. Uh, that's what allows us to have the site site be the web app be st static. Uh, because that would be doing basically server-like operations. Yeah. yeah, and if no one has any questions, uh, the next part of this, uh, and I'm just going to pose this, uh, and if people are interested, they can come talk to me. But I want to have you guys write uh, some uh, code for this. Uh, I showed in the last... Uh, session, the code I used for all the operations I did in S3, and I put it on the org GitHub. Again, all of this is on the website, uh, umncloud.com. But if anyone's interested in how you can actually do all of this uh, within code, uh, they can come talk to me. I can come uh, help show them what they can do to like write code, and then. Uh, write the code for it, and work with them on that. Uh, so yeah, everyone's interested in that, come talk to me after. If everyone's interested in more front-end stuff, you can talk to Cassie. But uh, there are no questions, and we're good for this session. Nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this function. See if the cloud watch thing is there. Cloud watch events. Here it is. So I'll delete that one too. And then logs. Here are the logs. And deleted the logs too. Alright, so now everything's gone. It's as if it never happened. At least from here. Uh, 
so yeah, uh, that's it for the session. Uh, again, if you want to uh, work on either of those things, come talk to me or Ken.